It is time for the Friday Mailbag, another Friday Mailbag edition of Dirt to Dust podcast presented by Outlaw Offroad. Welcome back, everyone, to the Mailbag episode where we answer your questions. We get a little direct interaction with the people. Get down with the people. Talk about what the people want to talk about because we want to <laughs> give the people what they want. Don't exactly. We, don't we want to give want. the people what they want? We got to give them what they want. 100%. So we go through, we scour the interwebs, we scour the internets, we scour the YouTube comments, the Facebooks, all that stuff. We scour it all for you, the people, to find out what you want to do. So welcome to the Friday Mailbag. Let's jump right in. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to, to Dust. Us. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. And like Doug said, welcome back to the Friday Mailbag episode. Last week, we talked about what the best cheap off-road daily driver was with Ryan McCutcheon out of Atlanta. Uh, that one was pretty cool. So if you haven't seen that one, definitely check that one out. We talked about some really cool, unique vehicles that I don't think a whole lot of people talk about uh, as far as daily driver capabilities. But we're going to continue on this week. We've got uh, several questions that came in. Um, Doug, are you ready? I am ready. Fire when ready. All right. First question for you. Um, this one's actually great. This is something that we we talk like we talk about in the shop a lot. Um, this one's from Mr. Corey Stevens. At what's the chosen method for reprogramming when you put larger tires on? We have a couple oh, options. Yeah, for that. yeah, yeah. That is good. Uh, do nothing. That's one option, right? <laughs> I mean, a, that is an look, option. <laughs> some people do it. It's it's quite popular on. Um, I mean, there's some vehicles that don't use like wheel speed sensors for tire size or that for their odometer. I mean, the real reason I'm assuming they want their speedometer right. That that's mainly the reason that people are going to reprogram for tires, because that is generally not in all vehicles, but in most, especially in you know jeeps and such that we're that this guy's probably talking about. Um, you're you've got sensors on there, and based on the number of rotations of the tire, that is your speed. You know, seven hundred rotations a mile, eight hundred rotations a mile, whatever, and the computer knows that. So when you put on a bigger tire, that's less rotations per mile. So you may your speedometer may say you're doing sixty, which you're actually going further. Because of that distance in travel, you may be doing 63, 64, 65 based on the difference in tire size between OEM or stock. And then that 33, 35, 37, 40, whatever you put on there. So uh, when he says programming, um, obviously, there's a lot of devices out there. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of go over a couple of them that you can plug into your OBD port and you can basically tell the computer what the tire size is. Some obviously are easier than others. Jeep obviously is pretty easy. Um, because they know that everybody changes tire size. So there's also a lot of products out there um, that enable you to do that. Uh, if you're in a newer Jeep in that platform, you can go anywhere from, you know, a little a little J-Scan uh, tool with the app all the way up to the Taser, Taser Mini, Taser Lite. You can do uh, the Flash Cal or the, um, uh, I don't think Diablo has one for the new one yet, but Diablo had one kind of back in the day. Uh, and actually they got bought. Um, Edge CTS for certain monocles have it. The X, the X4, I think the Flash. Um, so there's a lot. That's Bully Dog. All those, you know, Banks has them. So there's all these companies that have these. But at the end of the day, basically, they plug in the OBD, and one of the features that they offer is the ability to change tire size. Now, obviously, they do a lot. Generally speaking, they do a lot more than that, but they general generally will do tire size. Some vehicles you just can't. Uh, they just you can't hack into them yet. Um, you know, the new Ford is, is one that until very, very recently you, it just was what it was. You just needed to get used to it. Do that math in your head. And a lot of people do that. Um, the outlaw offers, most of the outlaw offroad shops use the, um, HP tuners, MPVI two or three, which in general for, for 
Sometimes they can do it for free. Sometimes you got to buy credits and you pay a little bit for that, but it's still a lot cheaper to buy credits and pay us to do it than it is to go out and buy a two, three, or $400 piece of equipment. We can just plug in. We just do, 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 and we tell it what the tire size is. So you can, option one is obviously you do nothing or you're in the situation where you just can't yet. Um, option two would be buying one of these um, devices like a flash cow, like a taser, um, like an edge CTS, something like that. They can do the programming um, for you and then you just have it. Plus, you have all the other options that it can change to, or you can have your shop do it if they are properly equipped. But, you know, at the end of the day, you're doing it so you can get um, the speedometer to work right. On the flip side of that, I know some people don't do it because, you know, if you do that and then you drive 30,000 miles on your different size tires, your odometer may say only 30,000 miles, but it's actually like 33 or 34,000. So maybe you get a couple hundred dollars more for the trading value. I don't know. <laughs> Just a little way to little way to game the system. <laughs> um, but yeah, programmers are generally going to be the way to do that. It's just how do you go about doing the programmer? And that's kind of up to you and the budget and what your shop, uh, what your shop offers. I would just ask them, or if you're doing it on your own, go and check out um, Taser, which is made by a company called Z Automotive, or the Flash Cal uh, apparatus, which is made by Superchips. Would kind of be my go-to's. Yeah, I think I would agree with that. Um, for sure. Taser, if you, especially if you want to look at the other features that Taser has, um, there's so many things that you can turn off and on, especially if you're looking at maybe adding your front trail camera or you want to modify some of the factory settings. Um, there's a lot of things that the Taser does that other mm -hmm. companies does not. But if you don't need any of that stuff, you're just looking to reprogram for tire size or maybe lower the threshold for your TPMS sensor. Um, no, there's there's several options. The J Scan is one that I've looked at. Gear pretty ratios, they're pretty pretty solid. Um, just race car, forty six ninety nine has a Taser. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I had a Taser yeah. since day yeah, one. Absolutely. So my my vote goes for the Taser. Um, but if you don't want to pay that price because you're not going to use all of those options, then there are certainly oh, cheaper options out there to do that. Uh, for yeah, sure. That's a daily. So question. moving that's a, that's right a, along. Comes up all the time. All the, the time. Yeah. And it's shocking oh, yeah, to absolutely. me, like doing absolutely. gears and stuff, and even tires, like other shops, like. That we'll get customers that come in and go, yeah, my speedometer's off. And I'm like, nobody's even ever told these people. Like, just the simplest thing of change. Like, they don't understand mm -hmm. it. And I'm like, man, somebody needs to have the wrench yanked out of their hand. But especially, like, on gears, like, people, I've seen shop after shop after shop after shop that'll advertise, you know, oh, it's $19.99 for gears. But they don't include the tire size. They don't include the programming for the gear ratio. And, like, in 90% of vehicles you're going to do gears in, it's not drivable unless you program the PCM. No, no, they don't, it'll, they don't it'll put it in there. And then it's like an really upsell thing. It's like I call it, I mm -hmm. think it's a bait and switch, but that's just me. I don't like places that do that. But but for, for those reasons and, and even more that we see that question about programming, tire size, and et cetera, et cetera, that is, you're right. It's a daily thing, <laughs> daily struggle. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And um, so moving right along, I know you are a uh, you're a big mountain bike fan. That's a little known fact about Mr. Doug Langford here. It's true. Uh, guilty. Pretty I'm pretty guilty. good enthusiast on the mountain bike stuff and e bikes. Um, so this one is from Virginia Dave. Um, she wants to know what are some great options for bike racks for a JLU, uh, both off the tire, spare tire oh, and off okay. the trailer hitch. I just recently went through this again um, because so I actually took my mountain bike to the Kentucky race last weekend uh, as a nice little back and forth to get back, you know, between the garage and the pits or driver's meetings or whatever. And ended up getting that bike got a lot of mm -hmm. use from a, uh, from both me and Rob, for sure. Rob basically made it his car for the weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. I have <laughs> unfortunately probably got just as much in my stupid mountain bike as I do. And some people do in their frigging Jeeps. It's, it's a dumb hobby. Just like putting that much money into a vehicle just to go off-road it. I cannot believe I put that much onto a freaking <laughs> bicycle considering the $120 special I bought at Walmart to go ride around as a kid and the dumb stuff I did to that thing. But it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, if you're going yeah. to – I'm a huge proponent. Get outside however however you get outside. Just get outside and mountain biking I think is a great way to do that. I am a big – not a big downhill guy. I'm a big trail mm -hmm. guy. I like technical trail stuff, like single track stuff. Um, so that's what my bike is built for. But mm – -hmm to get it to the trail first you must get it onto a vehicle and you can you can do that this one of a couple right. ways i mean obviously you can you could get the through <clears throat> axle or something like that you could take the front tire off every time you put it in the back of your jeep but the mm -hmm. back of the jeep it's not going to really fit back there without putting down seats and it's just a pain in the butt so the vast majority right. of people would go to having a bike rack now most people when they think of a bike rack 
they're thinking of, you know, the ones that come off the, the trunk on your Toyota Corolla or, or whatever. Um, but we have mm-hmm. Jeeps. So generally, we have tow hitches, so we're able to use that tow hitch one. Now, there are a couple. Um, Thule makes them. Yakima makes them. Kuat makes them. They hang on the spare tire. Those thing, those exist. And if you go to their websites, mm-hmm. they will show you the ones right. that kind of strap on there, and they're fine. Um, Any one from those three brands I just mentioned are great. There are other ones. Saurus is another good brand. Um, I prefer, I have a Thule. I've had many Yakimas. I am currently a Kuat guy because I like the uh, the Trail Doctor thing attachment that it has where you can basically put like a, a stand attachment and it holds your seat post. So you can actually work on your bike. Mm-hmm. So I like the Kuat for that. I just bought uh, the new Piston Pro X um, just as much for looks as anything else. I have Fox Factory shocks with the Kashima coat on my shocks and my dropper post and all that. These new Piston Pro has that mm-hmm. kind of Kashima coat on their little pistons that move the arms out. So it looked kind of cool. So I bought it for that. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing you got to remember when we're talking about a Jeep is you got that big spare tire there. So you're going to need, you're more than likely going to need an extension. Any bike right. shop's going to have those. Um, and it's just going to basically move yeah. that two inch hitch receiver out, you know, six to nine inches, whatever, however long the one you is. I think the longest one I got like 12 inches. Mm-hmm. I think mine's like eight. Uh, but I just bought the Kuat one. Um, and then that goes in and just makes the mount point out further. So when you put it up now, everything clears that spare tire. I like those. The one thing, make make sure that you get the the big downside of hitch bike racks is they shake and rattle and roll. They move because, you know, the main mm-hmm. problem is the outside size of that hitch is not ever going to exactly match the inside size of your receiver. So it gets in there and just loose and crack, crack, rattle, rattle. What they've right. come out with in the last several years and is, and they can do this. Some, some, some of you use a ratchet, some of you use a little turn knob. Once you put it in there, there's a device inside that bar that expands rubber pieces, you know, something of that, some kind of poly Delrin material mm-hmm. that goes and locks that in. Look for a bike rack with that kind of feature right. in it. Um, it is not going, because when it rattles, mm-hmm. A, when it rattles, it makes a lot of noise. But it also eventually will wear away the metal. Usually on the bike rack, not on the receiver hitch. The receiver hitch metal yeah. steel is way beefier, way, way better than the steel on your bike rack. Um, so you're going to start nicking off the paint, nicking off the powder coat, the e-coat, whatever. You're going to start getting rust. That's going to compromise the metal. So obviously we don't want any of that stuff. So find a bike rack. And again, my top three brands would be, in, and probably in this order, Kuat's my my favorite, uh, K-U-A-T. You've kind of seen it out there. REI sells them. Um, and then Yakima and Thule. Um, a lot of people think that's Thule, T-H-U-L-E. Everybody sees it. They make a lot of stuff. It's There's some European company. I think it's pronounced Thule. And then everybody says Yakima. What is it with bikes and brands that everybody mispronounces? It's Yakima. So Yakima, Thule, and Kuat. It's always it's, it's yeah. I've always known it as Yakima. Well, way, way, way back. I've, I called it Yakima too until I moved yeah. and when I lived in Washington State, and I learned that <laughs> until you learn that's actually an Indian. That's actually a Indian tribal terminology thing, and it's Yakima, not Yakima. There's actually a Yakima, mm-hmm. Washington, and there's Yakima mm-hmm. Indians and all that stuff. So. Um, I learned, yep. I learned many years ago that it's Yakima. So any of those three brains are good. Saurus is another one. S-A-R-I-S. Saurus is a good one in their higher and stuff. They have some budget stuff, um, but they also have some pretty good stuff too. Um, again, but if you're doing a hitch one, just make sure that it's got, um, that, that little extender device, expander, we'll call it an expander device. Um, and then outside of that, yeah. the, the pro XT from Thule is a good one. Um, that's got the expander device that all most of the, the upper Kuats have it now. Most of the upper Yakima's have them as well. So as long as you get that one and buy a decent brand, I think you're going to be happy and then just get the extender. If you've got that spare tire on your Jeep Wrangler or your Ford Bronco. Absolutely. And we got one more for you. I think it's what we got time for. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is also another common question that we hear a lot. Um, sometimes you don't want to hear it, but Mr. Robert Rhodes says, what are the best exhaust, exhaust options for the 3.6 that doesn't sound quote-unquote oh, ricey? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Say what about ricey? That does not, not sound quote-unquote ricey. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> oh, man. You are really going to give me an exhaust, Jeep exhaust question, aren't you? I am. Okay. Chop it all off. So, straight pipe it. <laughs> Uh, Hemi swap it. <laughs> that is the best uh, sound upgrade it. you can like do. LS, yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? Right? Like, <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, guys, it, it's a V six, right? And it's a four cylinder. And 
I, I guess we'll break it down. Uh, four cylinder first. Um, it's not going to happen. It's going to sound ricey. It is. It, it is, man. <laughs> it's a turbocharged four cylinder. Like, can you make it sound a little better? Yeah, sure you can. Um, but generally, the louder it goes, the worse it's going to sound. Because when you get up in the RPMs, it's going to have a high pitched tinny sound. It's just not going to sound good. So you got to be careful. And and YouTube videos, man, they suck. I know everybody goes to YouTube. I've done it too, man. I've done it. Um, I've done it, and I've gone to it, and and then you get it, and you get it on, and you're like, that doesn't sound anything like the YouTube video sounded like. Of course right. it doesn't. No. Like, of course it doesn't. <laughs> no. So don't do that. I mean, you can do them, but again, the more flow you get from a four-cylinder, the more ricey it's going to sound. It just is what it is. This is one of those things where the, the, the saying is true. There is no replacement for displacement. It just is what it is. So on a four-cylinder, I'm sorry. There's You can make it sound different, but what sounds good is so subjective. I, I don't really know what you're looking for, but there's nothing that's going to get you away from that ricey sound. There's just – I haven't heard one. I yeah. haven't. Now, what um, you can do, and this is what I did with my four-cylinder back in the day. Potato. Uh, um, one of the better things you can do if you're looking just for sound um, or if you're just you're trying to make it feel better. I don't know. Uh, speaker noises, turn the speaker up for sure. Or – um, turbo smart, and there's a couple others that make a blow off valve. That's always fun. Um, you can hear turbo noises. Uh, Magnaflow does make a, I want to say it's a rock crawler series exhaust, and it you keep the resonator, but you delete out the big muffler, so you get a little bit of a high clearance exhaust. So that helps for the off road. It doesn't sound amazing, but it sounds a little better. Um, and it's not too loud. That's really the only one that I really like so far for the four cylinder because anything else in the four cylinder just sounds raspy and like pretty bad. Do not um, get rid of the resonator in the four cylinder. It just makes not, it loud and it's just, just terrible. Keep it. There's keep just it, not keep, much you can do it. with the four cylinder. I just no. don't. Mm -mm. If, you, if you want noises like that, don't buy a four cylinder. And on the flip side of that, the no. six cylinder, still kind of the same problem, but not as bad. Um, there's a company down in Florida, Quick Time Performance, that makes a good kit for them. Little on the pricier side, but they they make what I think is probably the best sounding one. There is a little bit of a guttural sound to it, not a ton. It's still a V six, and it's not a high displacement V six. Um, but there are a few. The rest of them, uh, MBRP makes one. Magnaflow, well, MBRP makes a bunch. Gibson makes one. Uh, Magnaflow makes some. Flowmaster. There's a lot of companies that make them, and how they chamber them is all going to sound different. But you're not going to get. If you're looking for like that low guttural sound, it's not going to happen. What what the best you can hope for is kind of that Nismo, that little sound that like Infinities make when they get when they get going. That's kind of the best that I can hope for uh, on the V6 side, um, but a lot better than that four cylinder for sure. Um, if you're just and that's kind of the balance. If you're looking for, you know, oh, I want to get an exhaust because I want to make more power. Well, first of all, you're not. But if that's where you're at. You're only going to get that by airflow. You're only going to get airflow by man, by by removing obstructions, i.e., baffling, and more airflow means more noise. More noise in a V6 means higher pitch, and that's not going to work out well for you. But if you want to do it with baffling, QTP again, Quick Time Performance is one that does their baffling in such a way. Gibson Gibson a little bit too, uh, known for that lower sound. Um, not something you're going to do for horsepower, just not. Uh, it's still going to outflow factory. Um, but it's not going to outflow something like like a Magnaflow, like a like a AFC a, a, uh, AFE that um what that Rock Crusher one or whatever they have that high clearance one. Um, and then uh, the MBRP and Magnaflow both make one in that realm too. They are more for wheeling. They are more for high clearance. Delete all the things. Get it get it up. Get it high tuck. Get it out of the way. And we don't care if we make noise. Um, so if that's what you want, go for it. Th those are all good options. AFE, good option. MBRP, good option. Magnaflow, good option. Go for it. If you if you're concerned about the pitch of that sound, then look at I would say Quick Time Performance and Gibson. I would 100 percent agree with that. On Jeep, if you ask me about a different brand, I'm going to give you different. Yeah, no, this was it's like this was a Jeep specific like question, yeah. so we'll we'll stick with Jeep yeah, here. You give me a different motor and a different vehicle, I'm going to give you totally different yeah, recommendations. Absolutely. We're talking about Jeep, especially in and even going back to the JK, I would still say the same thing. Even though the JK only had that one three, the the that three six, but I would say the same thing on the JK uh, versus the JL and the JT. My recommendation would be the same. Mm -hmm. I agree, hundred percent agree with that. Unless it's a Hemi, then straight pipe it. Yes, <laughs> all the noises. <laughs> or did the um, all the noises? The uh, live valve. Those are always fun too, but don't do that on a V six. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um, although I do think the the three ninety two with that sport exhaust, I don't know, it's kind of cool. Um, if you like the active exhaust, that kind of gets a little quieter when you're driving around town. Then you turn it into sport mode, and it opens up. Yeah, that, that's that's kind of cool. I think it's stupid how much they charge for it to replace it if it goes out or yeah. Somebody says like a three thousand dollar exhaust. Yeah, I'm like no. Well, that can be no added stuff. aftermarket too. Then it's not nearly that expensive. But if you like. Yeah, I mean Holly makes you can yeah. make electric cutouts. Yeah, the cutouts are, are pretty that's easy basically to find. All it is. Yeah, that's all it is. Yep. Um, so like, I mean, if you live in a neighborhood with like an HOA or somewhat like a nosy neighbor, that's it's gonna tell the HOA on you. Then Didn't make it louder. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's not what you were gonna say. Yeah, no, I was gonna say quiet it down when you start in the driveway, and as soon as you leave the neighborhood, open the thing up and have your fun. Um, no, man, cold starts on a <laughs> on a on a pretty nice V8. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Pretty oh, yeah. awesome. If you have bad neighbors like that, then sell your house and move somewhere else. Don't don't make your poor exhaust pay the price for you having crappy neighbors. <laughs> Matter of fact, put a cam in it and uh, just make it louder. <laughs> yes, there we. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. Get that thing tuned for race gas and make them hear it and smell it. About a mile away. Who needs a radio? Mm. You got an mm. exhaust. Because I don't know of a better potpourri than race gas. I don't. I, I don't. I, I, mean, I never it, smelled something better. I I love the smell of race gas. So I'm not gonna. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue with you on that mm-hmm. one. But I uh, so good. I think that's it for the day. We're we're hitting the time limit on this one. That was my three. That was that was the three for today. So I'll let you close it out for us from here. Yeah, those were good ones. I like the I like questions like that when you guys ask questions like that. They're they're not. I don't. They're not like hard questions to ask, but there's ones we get all the time. Mm-hmm. So clearly, the information while it's in our heads right it's not really available out there for you guys which is why we do the mailbags you guys let us know what you want to know mm-hmm. and that's what we're here for so exactly thank you guys for for doing that for getting those questions thanks Caleb, for going out there and scouting the interwebs and finding them uh we always appreciate that and always appreciate everyone tuning in and joining us whether it be via audio video or both uh as always Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, do all those things wherever you find us, whether it be on YouTube, via the podcast or the video, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever, whenever, however. We appreciate you, and we want to bring more, so please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment up. You never know. Maybe one of your comments or your questions becomes a topic of a full episode or a mailbag. You just never know. So that is where we will leave it for today for this Friday episode. Uh, reminder, we will be back next Wednesday for another episode. Uh, who knows what it'll be? We'll decide that later. I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> he don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody we'll knows. Well, we kind of do know, if we're being honest. I Maybe mean, we, we know. I don't, but... <laughs> I don't even know if I know. Maybe I do know. There's a lot of not knowing going on. But that is where we will leave it for today. We will be back next Wednesday for whatever topic we decide. Until then, thank you guys for listening, and we will catch you on the next episode of Dirt to Dust. You've been listening to the Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road, the premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime... To see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.